little less conversation, a little more action. All this aggravation ain't satisfaction in me. In this section, we'll focus on transformations, and transformations essentially means three three main topics: translations, reflections, and vertical stretching. And sh we will assume that you understand these five basic graphs, the line, the parabola, the S shape or cubic, the absolute value function, and the radical or square root function. Know what those functions look like in advance and that'll save you a lot of time and energy in, in working these translations. What we'll first start off with is simply a vertical shift. A vertical shift just means that with some kind of value that is added on, you'll move the whole entire graph up or down. Take for example this one. g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. Please note that this plus 2 here is not in the radical. It's outside. And that's all we need to know to tell us to move it up or down. Positive is up. Negative is down. Take the entire graph, move it up two units. Now, if you're going to work smaller, that means point to point. Every single point moves up two units. This one is up two units. This point is up two units. This point is up two units. Here's another. The square root of x minus 3. This tells you, by the way, that you're beginning with the square root function. So again, you'll want to know this on site. And then this tells you, simply take the square root function, move it down three units. Therefore, ultimately, that's what your graph looks like. In the beginning, I, I'd written 0, 0, simply to let you know that this graph began at 0, 0. The five basic graphs all run through that point, so I'm using that as a hinge, or as a reference, rather, for our translations. Similar phenomenon for horizontal shifts. You'll notice, though, that there's no value in the outside for horizontal. It'll be grouped together with the x variable. So if you want to figure out how far across you're moving, you can't just simply go, oh, negative 2, I'm moving into the left two units. Instead, you have to take that group, you set to 0, and you solve for x. And in that case, we get positive 2. Therefore, take the graph, shift over two units, and that's essentially it. Again, to reiterate, if you're working from smaller points, you can just simply take each main point, move two units. This point moves over two units. This point moved over two units. There's also another point at 2, 8, so you would move that over two units as well. Let's combine them. Hopefully you recognize this. This is the square root function. There we are. And then we're going to take the square root function and we're going to move it. This number is outside. It is not coupled here with the x. Even though it is first instead of second like it was in the other example, this is vertical. And positive 1 means up 1. Negative 1 is down 1. This is coupled with the x, the 3. Therefore, it's going to be three units either to the right or to the left. And again, the way you determine that is by setting that group equal to zero and solving for x. And if you're wondering why I'm saying zero, the answer is because, again, zero, zero was where we began. So I use that as a reference. It's supposed to be at zero, but this tells you to move it three units away. So take your graph, three units to the right, one unit up and that finishes it off. Again, please note, we originally had points here at the origin at 1, 1 and at 4, 2. Well, those points have all been moved over three units to the right, one up. Three units to the right, one up. This one, three units to the right, one up. This is a little different. Here I'm going to define a function for you, f of x, so this is not one of our five base graphs. This is not the line, the parabola, the cubic, the absolute value, or the square root. It's just this check mark. Now, based on this check mark, I'd like you to move it two units and then three units. The question is, which way two units and which way three units? This number, two, is coupled with x. So that's going to be two units in the x direction, namely horizontal. This outside number, that's vertical. 
and again vertical numbers what you see is what you get. If it says plus 3 you're moving it up 3. If it says minus 3 you're moving it down 3. With x it's usually the opposite and I say usually there are exceptions and you'll see one of those exceptions later on in the video. In the meantime just consider solving for x you get positive 2. Therefore two units to the to the right and three units up and that finishes the reflections use the axes as a mirror so either the y-axis is a mirror or the x-axis is a mirror I don't want you to think of it like that though just think of these lines as mirrors don't think of them as x-axis and y-axis and this idea will become simpler Reflections are either be horizontal or vertical. It's horizontal if there's a negative in front of the horizontal variable, namely x. So if you have a negative x, you're flipping from here to here, or from here to here. Vertical, on the other hand, will not have a negative in front of the x. It'll be in front of the whole entire expression. In that case, it would be from top to bottom or bottom to top. For example, let's say you had to graph f of x is equal to the square root of negative x minus 3. I want you to note there's a negative in front of the x, and we also have some minusing going on. Your first consideration should be to know what the original graph looks like, and you see it hopefully as a square root function. Then we'll worry about reflection next, and this does not necessarily mean x. This means multiply. I'll explain later why I put multiply. The negative is in front of the x. That's the horizontal variable. Therefore, we know then that we're going to be reflecting it horizontally. So instead of being on this side, it'll be on the other side. I'm dimming, by the way, the original now because we don't need it to finish off this problem. In fact, you'll want to refer to the reflection to help finish this off. So positive values for the x's, positive 1 positive 4 became negative 1 and negative 4. Now we'll worry about translation. Again, because this is inside with the radical that's grouped together with x, if you set that to 0 and solve, you would get x is equal to negative 3. So this is an instance where just simply saying, oh, there's a minus sign, I'll make it plus. That doesn't work here. So that's why I'm stressing this take the graph and move it over three units to the left and that finishes off the problem here's another graph f of x is equal to the to negative absolute value of x minus one minus three first of all recognize this as an absolute value function so there's our original step one step two reflect keep in mind there's no negative in front of the x so that wouldn't reflect us horizontally. It's in front of the whole absolute value which would reflect us vertically. Therefore the reflection would look like this. After we've done the reflection we can now focus on translation and hopefully you figured it out by now. X minus 1, set it to 0 and you get positive 1. And because because um, it's coupled with X we're going in the X direction. And then again, out here, what you see is what you get, so that's going to be down three units. Take your graph, move it over one, move down three, and that finishes that problem. Vertical stretching and shrinking work similar to reflections, in that you will do those first prior to translating. Uh, let's take this example here. Graph f of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 1. Notice that the 2 is outside. And with these particular problems, you're not going to have a number right next to x. Instead, it's going to be outside. So this affects the y values. The 2 in front simply means this. You're going to take 2, and you're going to multiply it to every single y coordinate. First, the original. So we know it's an absolute value function. Secondly, now we want to multiply 2 to every y-coordinate. Now, on the last slide, I had reflect instead with the little time symbol. This is multiply instead. So take every single y-coordinate. Right here, that's at 1, 1. Right here is at 2, 2. 
So you multiply 1 times 2 and you get 2. Multiply 2 times 2, you get 4. So if you take these points, 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. Same thing over here. Here, here, here. Connect these together and you get that. Now, again, I want to emphasize that this graph here, you shouldn't be, you should not be focusing on it anymore. In fact, I'm just going to blank it out so it's gone. That was a mistake, so there we go. Again, the original, I'm fading it out. We're referring only to this transformation where we multiplied. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and translate. Move it one unit horizontally, one unit vertically. So this graph now, you'll move one unit to the right and then one unit down. And that finishes that transformation. Let's do another one that's different from our base graphs. Here I'm defining a function f of x. It is just simply these four connected points and all the points in between. Graph h of x is equal to 2 times this graph, shifted over 3 units, shifted over 1 unit. We have the original already given us, so we don't have to concern ourselves with that. Now we worry about multiplication. And with multiplication, it is multiplied to the y values again. So let's first consider our coordinates. I'm just going to simply have them in here. This location, this location, this location. I've written down all the ordered pairs. And what you're going to do is you're going to take 2 here, and you're going to multiply to every single y-coordinate. So consider 2 times 1 is 2. Graph the point. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Graph that point. This location, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then this location, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So in connecting all these together, we get that result. And now you're free to translate this. We're ready. So again, multiplying, then translate. This tells you horizontal, x minus 3. Set it equal to 0. Solve, and you get positive 3. So I'll move the whole thing, positive 3 units, to in the x direction, which in this case is right. And in every case, it's right. And then up 1 unit. So again, move your graph, 1, two, three, then up one unit. And that concludes the problem. Now, as for why I wrote x here, then plus minus, you may recall PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. You may recall that when doing problems, multiply and divide comes before add and subtract. That's what you're seeing here. This is the multiply, divide part. Multiply, really. Add, subtract is translation. So this never goes away. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.